Hello YouTube friends, welcome to the Red Parrot channel. I am your host, Mary Ellen. This is an episode of demonstrations and the topic is sun dyeing. This is uh, one of two, I'm gonna do the sun dyeing and then I am also gonna do echo dyeing. Huge disclaimer, I am not a dyer, I don't play one on TV. What I don't know about dyeing could fill an ocean. I've never taken a course, I've never uh, read a book. What I have done is taken instruction from a friend of mine, Jane, who gave me and our group of spinners, um, hey, you know what would be fun? Now that it's high summer, you can go do this. And this was during the pandemic because we all needed something to do once we'd all mastered making bread. And this is where I learned this particular method. So um, if you know better, you do better. Uh, this is what I do and you've seen the results that I achieve. So without further ado, let us talk about sun dyeing. So I've had, this is the sheet of instructions. I'm hoping that you can pause the video, take a picture of it, and then use that for reference. I still haven't figured out how to load this anywhere. Oh, it's another thing to do, but anyways, there we are. So this out of the way, let's get after it. So step one, ingredients material, alum. This is the jar of alum that I use. Uh, can I open it? Maybe it's the side. Here we go. Oh, oh, it's not opened yet. It's a brand new one. There we are. So alum looks like this. It uh, looks like salt, actually. It's a uh, granular white, looks like salt. Doesn't behave like salt. Uh, you find it in the spice section of your local grocery store and it is used largely for pickling. So that is the first thing you need, some alum. The next thing you need is some warm water. I am not doing this in my kitchen lab, so I do not have water, even though I have this uh, available, but we pretend that there is water. 100% 100% cotton, 100% linen, or 100% wool material must be 100%. This process does not work with any kind of man-made fiber, no polyester, no nylon, no um, acetate. Um, rayon does not work. You need to have a natural fiber. So any one of these three is fine. I usually get my cotton as large sheets from the um, thrift store. And if it doesn't have a label on it that says 100%, I don't buy it because it's not worth taking the chance. So a uh, piece that's about this size. Um, any larger than this and you're probably going to have difficulty uh, getting it dyed or to fit in the jar. But if you have a very large jar, you might be able to get away with it. Next thing, suitable dye plant. So what have I got? So I foraged today for, this is buckthorn. Um, I typically identify it most um, accurately by these little, um, dewy things. Uh, these are berries. We call them berries here in Canada. Uh, they often go a very dark purple when they are more ripe. There is um, the tip here is quite often, this is a better, better example. I don't know if you can see it there. You can see that there is a pierce and that's the thorn. Um, doesn't have one developed there and this is ripped off. And then these are the leaves. And let's have a look at the leaf. So uh, this is the vein system. It is not quite opposite, but not quite aligned either. Pronounced um, shiny leaves in uh, kind of an oval-ish shape, slight serration of the edge of the leaves. And I'm just gonna take another one. 
just to look at the back of another leaf. And that's the, the back. So these look like they're almost opposite here, and then here they go um, very opposite. So that's what the leaves look like. So this is our dye plant. You can use uh, goldenrod, marigold, um, jewelweed, uh, sumac. Um, you can use walnut and you don't need the alum if you're using the walnut. You can use sage. Um, and what's the other thing that I have out in the front? Maybe raspberry? No, it's not raspberry. Uh, might be, it's labeled, uh, mulberry. But we have written down buckthorn, goldenrod, and marigold. Marigold is probably the most uh, readily available, as is the goldenrod. So start with those. Um, or whatever you want to try. Equipment, moving along. Old glass, mason jar. This is from the dollar store. It isn't, um, I have two, I have a separate spot to keep any jars that I do the, any kind of dyeing with. Really important to separate your let's have fun in the art room equipment from your I'm going to make food and feed people, including myself. So old glass jar. I also use um, large Ovaltine jars, um, uh, old pasta jars, and uh, uh, large pickle jars as well. Doesn't matter. It's a glass jar. It's got a lid. Teaspoon. Teaspoon. Old used chopstick. And this is another example where um, I have written down here, use for dye only, use for dye only, and I have an X. So I have equipment that I have large X's on, and I know for sure that means that they have been used for the art fun side of the world, and they are not to become part of the um, food prep world. And the last couple of things I need, did I bring the masking tape? No, I didn't bring the masking tape, show me, I'll be right back. Masking tape and marker, and these will be to label your work. Labeling your work is really important for a couple of things. One, you want to remember what material you used, and two, you want to remember what date you put it out. So did you do two days? Did you do four days? The longer you leave something to die before it saturates, you will get a different color. So that's important for um, keeping track of your results, if that's something that you wanna do. So step one, uh, I wonder if we can do this. No, it's not, because it's just gonna end in heartache. So I would fill the jar about half full of water. Then I would take the alum, pop her open, teaspoon, pop it in, stir, stir, and the alum isn't going to completely dissolve unless you use very hot water, um, but just sort of get it going. Then you cut plant material into some pieces. I know, that was really lame. What is a some piece? Some pieces, I can't fit this into a jar. That's why we didn't actually put the water in. I feel like I've made a good life choice today. <laughs> I'm just cutting it into kind of chunks that I know are gonna fit into the jar. Buckthorn is the dye is in everywhere. So in the bark, in the leaves, in the berries. So I can use just this whole thing and just jam it in there. So I fill it about, I don't know, half full. Down here. There we 
here. Um, not gonna worry about those. Get that closed. Uh, so where are we here? Uh, add the dye plant material. So there will be water. The alum is already in the process of dissolving. You add the plant matter. Then you add your material. So adding the material, you want the material to be loose enough in the jar so that the liquid has access to it. So if it gets crushed or pinched, there will be no dye have access to that pinch. So if you have too much and it's all crumpled like that, what will happen is just the outsides will be um, absorbing the dye and there won't be the dye in the middle. So that's why you have just like a small amount. And then you just sort of put it in like that, mash, 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 pour in some more water, then cap it. Then you would take the masking tape. Here we are. And then you would label buckthorn. or whatever your art material is, plant material is. And I always use do the day of week as well. So this is Thursday, August 4th. It's 23, that's for completion, but the August 4th. Thursday makes more sense to me than August 4th. What's the number of today? I don't remember, but my, what day it is, usually makes me, um, it's a faster calculation. So then you would take this, uh, so we've got labels, place it somewhere where there's lots and lots of direct sun. So I have, um, you might use a porch, uh, you might use uh, a window, though outside is usually has more intense heat because there's not air conditioner or anything else like that. And then sometimes you say, well, okay, I'm gonna put the, on the front porch in the morning and then the back porch in the evening um just so that it gets a maximum amount of dye but what you want to have is these jars heat up and it's the heat with the alum that is going to draw out the dye and then the material is going to um, absorb it i don't know if it's the alum helps with the dist uh, extraction of the dye or the binding of the dye i'm going to say it's helping with the binding of the dye in any event uh you wait and every day you sort of do a couple of these because you want to have a certain amount of circulation of the dye material and just get sort of an even spread. Um, you could even undo it. I'm just gonna do that. And then use our dye material and just do some stir, 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 stir poke it around. You might even take the fabric out and see how it's doing, maybe rearrange it or stuff it in. Or, you know what, I don't really care. I'm just going to try it, slam it in the jar, and we're done. So that's the Check the Dars Daily, agitate, stir to mix contents. And then after a few days, when you're satisfied with the color, remove the material and rinse. Important note, there is going to be a lot of color come out of the material. Um, because the material has been soaking in a, a dyed liquid. Uh, let it rinse clean, and there will be ample dye left in the material. And then you just dry it. So, what do we call this? I think the, the British have a TV show called Blue Peter, and they do what they call Blue Peter moments, where they do like a, a desktop demonstration there is gonna be an elapsed time and then they just sort of pull from underneath the desk and say, this is what it looks like. So this is my Blue Peter moment. And this is what goldenrod that was started on Tuesday looks like. So look at that yellow. That is just vivid. So I would say this is probably ready to come out of the dye. And that is all I ever do to create sun dyeing. It is like sun tea, but we are using plants and alum to create a dye. So I hope that's helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to 
uh, add, change, or whatever, because it's always a conversation. Please like and subscribe for more episodes, and we'll see you real soon. Bye now.